<laughs> All right, good evening, everyone. Glory to God. Happy rainy Saturday. Such a, a blessed guy. Yeah, happy Saturday. Happy, happy rainy Saturday. It's a rainy Saturday. Weather for two, Shabby. I don't know for you. <laughs> I'm not in this house. So. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We're two in this house. Or two. Or three. Yeah, right. I mean, he has his own room, so he can take care of himself. We can take care of ourselves. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, let's get serious now. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Now, um, thank you for tuning in again today. Um, we hope that you got blessed to the last episode. Um, let's go straight to the point. Let's say a word of prayer and let's get started today. Maybe pray for us in Jesus' name, Amen. Father, we thank you for the grace, the opportunity, the privilege to come and learn at your feet again lord accept our thanks in jesus amen name. pray that you open the eyes of our understanding in jesus amen. name and our eyes are flooded with light in the name of jesus amen the words not stand against us on the day of judgment in jesus name amen but they will prosper and bear fruits in our lives in jesus name amen. everyone that comes in contact with these words either up hearing it now or listening later or being shared to by someone will be blessed in jesus name amen. and in the end every family would get it right even in marriage and in relationships in jesus name amen thank you heavenly father for you, you always Lord. answer us when we call upon you in amen. jesus name we pray amen 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 in jesus, in jesus name. name amen is the camera rolling so you can check <laughs> please check let's just be very sure you can't check, but it's rolling. <laughs> one minute it's rolling, it's rolling. Okay, that's good. because i have to just be very sure so that We'll get better quality after for the video we're going to post on YouTube. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you so much. Uh, you're welcome to today's episode of If Marriage is a Game, These Are the Rules. Um, last week, I mean, last time we talked about this topic, that was episode one. We gave a, a brief introduction uh, as to what uh, the topics would look like. And the first topic we actually talked about is God the author. All right, and that's what we're going to start with today. Um, um, we're going to read some scriptures today because we want to have a very good foundation about this and understand that everything starts and ends with God. And there is nothing that happens on the surface of the earth that God is not the author. Uh, the Bible says in the book of John chapter 1 verse 1 that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God himself and that word dwelt amongst us as a human being and we beheld his glory as, uh, as the glory of that of the father now if you take that to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 it says in the beginning also so if you link them together in the beginning in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and that means that before God created the heavens and the earth there was something that was existing and that is the word not something oh, so someone the is side, can we repeat so it will be facing up uh, okay let's let's give that a try then okay all right ah uh, it's just our that setup. our setup yeah doesn't actually support this oh, as you such put your laptop down and then put it on it uh perhaps maybe that works yeah. i think that works okay okay good so let's do this with him all right okay i think it works better okay this is a better deal oh yeah yeah this is a better deal actually is this okay tutu african clothing are you is this fine ah uh, tutu african clothing that's interesting <laughs> well, you know. i know her very well <laughs> yeah all right so let's continue then yeah i think this is a better view now so um you want us to put something to prop up the laptop yeah, I think it's fine this way if you're okay with it. Okay, let's just put the pin to pop it up. Okay, sorry, everybody, fine. sorry. Yeah, just to make sure that everybody has a good view. Yeah. Is this fine? Yes. All right, cool then. Yes. Yeah, so um, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then Genesis 1 1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But in the beginning, the first thing that happened was not that God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, what really happened was that the Word actually came into it into into full force and then the word now said let us create i mean god, god created the heavens and the earth technically you can say the word created the heavens and the earth that's where i'm going 
God created the heavens and the earth, but John 1, 1 says, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So if God created the heavens and the earth, it means that the word created the heavens and the earth. And everything emanates from it. Even there are scriptures that Paul actually quoted when he was writing to the Christians, uh, I think in Corinthians and Ephesians and Colossians, and he said the same thing about Jesus being the, the wisdom and the power of God talked about the fact that in the book of Ephesians that everything consists in him. In him all things consist. There was nothing that, that was created that was created outside of Jesus. That's the word himself. Now, why are we talking about this in light of marriage? Like, I mean, what people like hearing about marriage, I went to minister somewhere uh, like three weeks ago, um, somewhere, okay, last week, and I was teaching the medical students there something about not hearing what you want to hear. When you hear relationship yeah. talks, what people think about is oh boy girl kind of stuff you mean you fall in yeah, love yeah you mean you fall in love Marry. they start teaching you how to handle handle relationships how to handle your emotions those things are fine but the real core of what you should know before you step into any relationship before it even leads to marriage is that god the author must be known god the author must be understood God, the author of marriage, God, the author of every other thing on the surface Religion. of the earth, must be understood, well understood. Because if you don't understand him as a person, then it becomes very difficult for you to understand his mindset about what he created for you to enjoy. So, God did not create marriage um, as a matter of just a one off event. But before we go into that, let me explain something again. Everything God created, he created with a mindset of it being reproducible it being re re replicated effortlessly and everything got created if you check god will not come to the earth again now and say oh this grass has been cut let me write a code for it to grow back the grass will grow back naturally um, the the animals will reproduce naturally human beings reproduce naturally there's a there's a law that god has actually put in place for all those things to happen and that is because every system God creates, He creates them permanently. He doesn't do any work that He has not finished. So when it comes to marriage, there is a system that God has created and He has finished the works already. And your understanding of that system would help you to understand the mind of God and how to actually do marriage the right way. But if you want to learn the best of, um, let me say, bioinformatics, for instance, you have to go to professors of bioinformatics, those who invented things. If you want to learn about neurosurgery in the world right now, they will, they will mention Ben Carson no matter what because he created something in the world of neurosurgery that everybody looks up to today, all right? Separation of Siamese twins, that's an example. He created a system around it, put it in textbooks such that even if you have not met him before, even as long as, as long as, before you were born. exactly, even if you, even if he has died before you were born at all, as long as you can read that textbook and follow the principles that he has stated for separating Siamese twins, for instance, you will be able to do what he did. Exactly the same thing that has to do with the word of God and marriage. God has put certain things in the Bible as guide so to understand his thoughts about the system of marriage that he has created such that there is no point in time anybody wants to step into marriage and read that manual and would fail. That is the mindset of God when it comes to marriage. Forget many marriage books that have been written by humans. They are all queuing from what God has written in the Bible, in yeah, the word of God. Part. In, in part, fact, they are even part. saying in part and prophesying in part, different, parts, different, different parts, perspectives parts, of what God has written in His Word. Yeah. Like I was discussing with my wife today when we were gisting on this topic, I was saying something about even things that have to do with general human tendencies in marriage, like anger, like different kinds of emotions that actually make or mar marriages. They are all things that have been that that the Word of God has been written to take care of. Mm -hmm. There will be less divorces. There will be less. Uh, manslaughter, murder, there will be less trouble in marriages these days if everybody understands their Bible very well and understand the mind of the author. There are scriptures that are written that are not directly written in the scriptures as, oh, this is for marriage. But if you open your Bible and you read the word of God very well, you know I started with the word being the origin of everything. So if you want to understand marriage, you have to understand it from the perspective of the word. So if I want to live better with my wife i think it's move closer because they're not i'm not sure they are seeing you very well there then let's move that because this will be okay all right good 
yeah okay so yes. yeah no worries so so if 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 you want to understand some things about marriage you have to understand what the bible says what the word of god says and that is god himself all right and when it comes to interhuman relationships if, let me give you a very classic example of what i'm trying to say so when we first of all got married there were certain things even before we got married while we were cutting there were certain things that were playing out that were very clear to both parties that oh we need to actually work on this this is the work of the flesh here <laughs> and you know paul has written to the people of galatians about the works of the flesh in galatians 5 these are the works of the flesh these are the works of the spirit when you walk in the flesh this is what is going to happen when you walk in the spirit this is what is going to happen and it was pretty clear that i was walking in the flesh she was walking in the flesh there were some things that we were not okay with and we're walking in the flesh and we needed to walk in the spirit about now Thank there you examples okay a very classic <laughs> example is okay yeah because everybody it needs is, to understand yeah so a very classic example is self-control in the area of sexuality and all that we were having affections for one another and we know that ah the way the the chemi chemistry is burning it can burn a house down we've talked about that in one of our episodes before and what we did was we have to learn how to walk in the spirit and not gratify the lust of the flesh because the things of the flesh will war against the things of the spirit and we needed to make sure that that scripture is applied in that relationship so for a whole month we had to learn self-control we didn't see ourselves we had to stay away just communicate, just like, communicate on phone like when just like we're in a long long, long long distance relationship kind of stuff yeah. so we, we couldn't we couldn't talk physically because we know we're not okay let me use that word and that is just an example so we had to learn how to walk in the spirit these are things that are not talked much about relationships these days um, or even like um, like getting angry yeah over even things, anger over getting things getting upset getting yeah. angry yeah being so um caught up in your own feelings like exactly oh it's my way like getting angry seriously yeah, yeah that, that was another thing we had to work on yeah. and there are scriptures for that too but they are not really re re uh, written in the scriptures to say okay this is for marriage but yeah. the scripture says be angry but do not sin do not let the sun set oh, over your anger. anger that's just an example and we had to apply that in our marriage but we could have missed it in our relationship because um, if, if we did not apply those scriptures where did the scriptures come from god is the author of that scripture so everything has to do with marriage everything has to do with relationships everything has to do with every life. aspect of your life Living. god is the author of it yes. and there is no book there is no word any man can speak out there there's no amount of what we're going to speak here today that would suffice enough for you to understand god and and his power and authority over marriage like you would learn if you go and read the scriptures yourself so the reason why we're having this is not to say oh we know about marriage altogether and we just want to come and teach you no we're saying we're pointing you to the author of marriage yeah. himself if you want to get married to the one who can let you get married right yeah if you want to get married and you probably have been boggling your past relationships or probably this is even your first relationship you want to enter into or whatever stage of relationship you've been you've boggled in the past you want to get it right this time or you have never even done any relationship before or even your relationship has been smooth and easy you still need god the author if you are going to play the game of marriage and win you have to understand god as the author um we've said it here before once and we're going to say it again that there are people who got divorced and they question them, they ask them questions like, yeah. what would you have done better? Yeah. Or would you have averted the divorce? Are things you could have done to prevent, to prevent the divorce from happening? I even sent you something yeah. yesterday, if I had me, myself, yeah. I even wanted to mention that. Like, there was actually a video of a woman who went to her husband, ex-husband's yeah. house. Um, after they, they divorced, they, 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 finalized, they, they the finalized the divorce, they signed the papers. The next day, she now went to her husband's <laughs> house to see if he's going to take her back. That she like, regrets the decision. Yeah, she regrets the she decision. Wants, she wishes he would take her back. And, and I'm like, what happened all through the time you're signing those documents? I, mean, I, I don't know how long, but I know, like, in the US, because I think the video was in the US, and yeah. I think I know that divorce takes quite it takes a, a long time. Even in Nigeria, I mean, it took so, almost five years or so people exactly. to get their divorce Two, papers. Years, it's not man, cheap, actually, man. and it's not easy. So, go so for you to so go through that process, and then the day after you finish signing everything, you now came back to your senses. It means that something, there was, a, there was lack of judgment yes. there. There was lack of wisdom. 
you could have actually done a lot exactly. better and she like do it well. They were terrible for each other or they were terrible human beings, you know? Yeah, exactly. And so that 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 pains me a lot because it means that if you read your Bible very well, if you understand things that God wrote in the book of Proverbs about wisdom, you know, they, they said common sense is not common after all, and it's very true. And that, there's a scripture for it actually in Proverbs, in the book of Proverbs, there's a wisdom is crying out on the streets. Yes, sir. Every day, wisdom is crying out. <laughs> wisdom is crying out. And if you check, wisdom is the principal thing that the scripture says is responsible for a good home. Through wisdom is a house built. Through understanding, it is established. That's the, the book of Proverbs chapter 24. It says, through wisdom is a house built and through understanding, it is established. So, if you don't have wisdom, you can't actually run your home very well and you can't establish it. That's an example. So, and that brings to the next scripture I'm going to quote. You know, I said I'm going to quote in a lot of scriptures today because we must go back to the word of God. What the word of God says about life and living. And marriage is just the most important institution God created. And that's why God created it as a first. Because if everyone gets marriage right, every society will be fine. If all the societies are fine, all nations will be fine. If all nations on the earth are fine, then the whole world is fine. It's a better place to live for everyone. But the world is upside down today because... Homes are not actually getting it right. Yeah, Families know, are not getting how, it right. Um, they always say that they're saying like, it's only when you have something good going that the devil or the enemy or or evil things would want to like look at. Like if you if you have nothing going on, if you're not doing anything good, then you you have no need for haters. I don't exactly. Understand. And so what he said now, like about marriage being the God's great agenda, God's great plan, is actually true because. Adam was in the Garden of Eden for some time before Eve came. Mm -hmm. Why didn't the devil come to deceive him? Why didn't the exactly. devil come to, to, to thwart God's plan when it was just Adam tilling the ground and doing God's bid? Exactly. God was coming down to talk to Adam every day. Now, why, why didn't the devil come to attack him? Well, as soon as the woman came and family was established, the devil, the devil came. came and he attacked. And so, the devil coming to attack the unit of family or the system of family shows that there's actually something big that is called family like exactly. god is really really mm -hmm. really god is like big on family and exactly. that's like the grand plan of god and so for the devil to come at it because think about it why didn't the devil come to deceive a adam or why didn't alone. the devil come when adam was alone he could have used other things he could have even tempted him with something that looks like a woman you could have tempted him with anything. You could have come to talk to him in mm -hmm. any way. But as soon as... But that temptation never happened it never until happened. the home was established. Until the home, until the union of marriage was formed. So, it, marriage is a big deal to God. And I was just thinking about this afternoon that um, God has angels. The devil has demons. Angels and demons were the same thing before the devil rebelled against God and took some angels with him. And now you have demons. So, for everything God creates... The devil will always want to twat it and create a counterfeit. <laughs> now, let me read some scriptures to you. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. He says, His divine power, I'm reading English Standard Version. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his glory and excellence. All things that pertain to life and godliness has been given to us, but through the knowledge of God. Through the knowledge of God. Now, to confirm this very well, I will link another scripture with it now for you to understand it better. But let me confirm this to you. Everything that you need for life, God has provided already. In fact, my prayer life, our prayer lives changed recently when God started telling us to start praying not for things to happen but for the things that have happened to manifest there's a difference like there are finished works of christ already there are things that god has done already for us they are he's not about to do it yeah. we just need to come to the knowledge of the god who is the author of those things yeah. and then they come to us easily yeah. and the holy spirit took us back to things we have enjoyed we've actually seen as victory and they came from the place of not asking God to do them, but for us to actually come into the full manifestation of the things that God has done already. When it comes to marriage, God has settled your marriage already. God has settled everything that has to do with your marriage from the foundations of the world. God has created it to be the best. But the enemy will always come to distract you. Like the scripture says that he only comes to do one thing, to steal, 
to kill and to destroy. <laughs> That's all the enemy comes to do. That's what the devil comes to do and he does it very well with marriages. There are many agendas that the enemy has put out there today. That's the next scripture I want to link with it now. Romans chapter 1. There are many things that the enemy has actually put out there these days that are actually competing for this knowledge of God that we are talking about. So let's read Romans chapter 1 from verse 18. It's a long read, but I want you to listen very well. This English, that, I love this English standard version because it makes it simple for you to understand. It's like if somebody is speaking. So I want you to listen very well. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. There is a truth out there. There is the truth about marriage that God has put out there. And God actually explained it in the scriptures through Paul when he was writing to the Romans. The truth will always want, will always be suppressed by the enemy. All the things you see on social media these days, men has come, women are trash, all sort of things you hear today. Yoruba demons. Yoruba demons. They are all <laughs> My son is a Yoruba subtle. Boy, it's not a demon. Yeah, they are all subtle um, 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 plots to suppress the truth of God concerning marriage. There are great marriages out there. There are beautiful marriages out there. And praise God, ours is one of them. Glory to God. <laughs> now, the reason why we're saying this is this. The truth is getting suppressed out there on social media to a large extent. Like you can almost you can al not tell. Like, you know, there's even this thing about... Um, to be honest, there are many good marriages out there. Yeah. But, but you won't see it... You won't see them flaunting it on social exactly media. Exactly, as bad marriages as bad stories as stories of deception exactly. stories of, of that you see a lot on social media things exactly. that, that are going on and the enemy is social media too is also helping propagate this like people can actually sit down and begin to wonder like are there actually good marriages out there like sincerely i, I can tell that people some people can look around them and even check their parents and be like do I want to, is do, it a, are there really good marriages out there? You understand. That's the truth being suppressed, being being yeah, being twisted being, yes, for you. That's all right. Real truth. Now, even in science, statistics in statistics, there's what's called skewness of data. So, um, because you see a lot of bad data concerning marriage, people enjoying are not coming out. <laughs> people are enjoying are not coming out. All those no, kind no, of I stuff. People that are enjoying, people that are enjoying they it, they're not, not coming out. out. But you see some some bad data as regards marriage, and because you are seeing is skewed data because bad it, because news spread so, bad faster. news spread faster, good news doesn't spread so fast. You are skewed in the data that you get that okay maybe there are more bad marriages than good marriages, but it might not actually be. So you are just depending on what you see out there. But there are good marriages, and they don't actually come out and talk. We know a lot of good marriages. We know a lot of good like, marriages. Around us that, of I mean, good but they don't come out and flaunt it. So they don't put it on social media. Maybe there should even be a campaign. A campaign itself to say campaign. Maybe ask that good marriages exist, something the like thing that. Is, the way, but the way, most the way, people will not the even. The society has even um, has even like painted the picture to be yeah if you even post something good I'm yeah posting. in fact some people can good say things don't trend no people would even say you're lying <laughs> and that's why it's not trend it's not trend because it's a good thing because a lot of people things in the past so fast. have posted such things and and then and they probably got born they were, no they people turned came, out they, they were they were maybe they were lying they were deceiving okay, yeah. themselves and well, another yeah. thing is towards end most people that don't post like what, what, so what, what are you posting, yeah, for? Are you like, posting for? You have the person right beside you, for instance, that you can profess all the love you want to profess to. So, most times, it's, it's basically just for memory's sake that people yeah. post. So, don't be deceived. All you see on social media is not all it's that not all is that it is. That's just the truth. So, there, there's, there's a plot to suppress the truth out there. And then verse 19, Roman, we're reading Romans 1, verse 19, it says, For what can be known about God is plain English to them. Standard Don't, English standard version. Don't forget, 2 Peter 1, 3. All things you need for life and living has been given unto you through the knowledge of God. But he's not saying here in Romans 1, 19, that for what can be known about God is plain to them. That knowledge of God you can have is plain to you. That can actually make you have everything that has to do with life and godliness, including marriage. But... Because God has shown it, I'm sorry, and for what can be known to God is plain, to, known about God is known to them, is plain to them because God has shown it to them. 
for his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, has been, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. God has made himself visible mm -hmm. to everybody as much as possible. Last week, we had a very interesting experience outside. We're talking about God ourselves yeah. and our landlord at the other side. And we actually just were talking about God. Like people say, there is no God. Like no, how foolish can you be? Yeah. You know when David we're talking said, about plants. We're talking about because there's a mini garden in the house, and we're just talking about how how plants grow naturally. Sudden, it's just growing. They just grow so, so fast many and all that. Yeah. So many things growing, and then we talked about God, and it was so amazing. It was so amazing and beautiful. And, beautiful. and then there was like a, there was a very very bright sun that just it, it was it was actually cloudy that rain. day. It was about to rain. All of a sudden, the sun just shone on us there and then, and we were like, whoa, like this is beautiful. God is amazing. God is awesome. Like so, I was having good people. Yeah, it was it was that it was that magnificent actually, and. And everything God created actually speaks. Romans, uh, um, Psalm 19 verse 1 says, The heavens tell the, of the glory of God, and the firmament displays the wonders of His hand. Day after day, night after night, they utter speech. They are talking to you. They are telling you God exists. Everything, and everything God is created telling God is telling exists. everybody God exists. Everything. All right? Everything. So that you are without excuse. The next verse now says, Verse 21, for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. The foolish man says in his heart, there is, there no, is God. no God. Verse 22, claiming to be wise, they became fools. Mm -hmm. So there are things that look wise out there that I people portray woke, as, like ah, yeah, we are, we are woke. God, like... the, the, the extreme feminists who come out to say, oh, sorry. Um, there is nothing like me getting married and or then the extreme misogynist uh, like as well. Is. Like I cannot lose my independence to a woman or I can't lose my independence to a man and all that. Yeah. It sounds very wise, but it's actually foolish. <laughs> Alright? No, that, on. that one doesn't it, it, it's, the, you won't hear it and think, oh wisdom. But there are even other things that, that, that sound say wise. That, that like sound wow woke but that is anti-god yeah anti yeah because it's anti what the bible says about what marriage should be all right and then verse 23 says and exchange the glory of the immortal god for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things verse 24 now said therefore god gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity mm. to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves mm. dishonoring of their bodies Sexual immorality, that's one. Now that's different, there are different like levels. Gluttony. Gluttony. Anything that you don't eat, exactly still dishonoring your, your body. Dishonoring your body. You know, it says because they exchange the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forevermore. For this reason, God gave them to a dishonorable passion. Hmm. I mean sorry, to dishonorable passions. For their women exchange natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. You see, when they say that there is nothing in the scriptures that talks about homosexuality. It is not true. It is not true. Read your Bible. If you true. read your Bible, if this you Romans Bible 1 true. is the best scripture if you want to find where homosexuality was talked about word for word. And how it came to be. And how it came to be. the consequence of something. Mm -hmm. We're not saying it doesn't exist. When people say, oh, there's nothing like homosexuality, that's being ignorant. Yeah. It exists, but there's a, it has an origin. And how God allowed, like it is as a result of something that yeah. came. Yeah. And it's, it's in the and Bible. Then, and then verse 27 Explicitly. corroborates it. Verse 26 says, For their women exchange natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. You can say that one is not clear enough. <laughs> now look at this verse 27. It says, And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion one for another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves due, the due penalty for their error. What else is clearer than this? Clearly, in the Bible. What else is clearer? Clear? Men and men, women and women. It's clear. But the reality is, everything, you know, we said there, there is nothing on the surface of the earth that is existing now that you can't find in the world. This is not the first time men are relating with men. It's in the book of Genesis when Sodom was destroyed. Yeah. Is there homosexuality is in the Bible and God destroyed Sodom for it? So when people come and say all sort of things and then God giving them to reprobate mind means uh, that you it, it won't even mean to you like a, a sin anymore. Mm -hmm. you, 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 it becomes your normal. conscience is said like 
it, you you know there's there's something especially like if you remember how our lives were growing up there are times even like we have a three-year-old three-year-old son and some things he knows he shouldn't do for instance if he's drinking water and pouring it on the floor and he hears his name he'll shake mm -hmm. that's because he has a conscience and he knows that that's not right mm -hmm. imagine when you're, you've been doing that doing that doing that and over time god decides to give you up to a reprobate mind and, and just let it just be just, like okay continue doing there's your there's your nothing thing yourself. in your heart that can even Condemn convince you, you or convince you yeah. or make you feel like anything is wrong. In fact, you will be an advocate for doing it. You know, now it's very rampant in the world that if you're not, many people are not into homosexuality, but they are they are sympathizers with homosexuality. Yeah, saying that, there are even that, scriptures for that. Too. Yes, we're not, we're not even saying that if that is your reality, you should die or we have written should. about that before yes, you can before. go to my facebook page and yes, go and read and it up the, the tragedy of truthiness yes. go and check one of my previous posts you see there the tragedy yes. of truthiness i talked about homosexuality yeah adi emily writes on facebook you see everything there we've actually talked about this before that yeah there are certain circumstances where genetically some people are predisposed to that like the way they are made up their genetic construction is such that they have both male and female tendencies and even structurally and at birth they are assigned one that was not properly yeah assigned to them and so they are switching that's not the case here we're talking about the world coming out to say things that are wrong are right yeah. and in fact what it is looking like right now is that one day some people will just wake up and say i feel like a goat yes now like, i don't i, I, I don't feel, feel i don't feel like a human I being if, i want if, to start eating grass if the world is not going to accept people that say that i feel that the world is unfair yeah it's actually quite unfair because unfair. they come and make what is supposed to be an exception they are trying to make it the rule no more exactly so why can't you accept everything i mean reality? yeah so i can come out and say that oh i feel that i am the president of Nigeria. Yeah, and because I, I feel want, so. I, like I, like that's why. I've been yeah, surprised. and I want to enter as Europe. Why should you shoot me? I feel so. That's so, why. Or, like, or it's I, my real person. Exactly. Or I can even feel like I'm a child tomorrow. Yes, and I want to start. Playing and I want to start, with start playing with children and start touching them sexually. I mean, I can feel like I'm a child. I mean, the world. That's who I am. Yeah, that's, that's who I am. And, and that is what they me. expect us to accept. You see that scripture that talks about God giving them to a reprobate, reprobate mind? mind. That's exactly what it says. Is allowing them to. He, he said, thinking that they are wise, they became very foolish. Hmm. So there are things that are looking very wise to some people, and they look like they are woke. Now we're just talking about homosexuality. Yes. There are many other aspects of, of marriage that mm -hmm. is okay. Aside Even Adam and Steve, that is coming up. There are yeah. different aspects of marriage, like um um. What was the one we discussed earlier on today? Um ah. Uh, Cohabiting. Okay. Cohabiting. Yeah, yeah. People are not married yet, but they are cohabiting. And churches sometimes, some churches don't even they just close their eyes to and say Learning everything is fine. Learning sexual compatibility. Learning sexual you compatibility married, before you get married. So you have to have sex like, to know if you are compatible um, sexually. Yeah, sex is very important. Like it's there are legit um explanations that, exactly. that actually sound like they make sense. Exactly. When you look at it, like it's actually foolishness. It's foolishness because, because the truth is that's not the first person you're having sex with. You probably have had very great sex with some people before. Why did you choose to marry them? People, married people, their first hundred sex, it's not the same. Like exactly, in 20 it gets years, better. It, 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 so <laughs> let me tell you what I used to tell my my friends. I mean, sorry, I can't call them my friends, but like my colleagues in medical school who were sexually active, and they would have sex morning, afternoon, night. Especially when we don't have exam, when we're done with exams, they would just go and bring one girl from somewhere, and they would just start. They will camp the girl from anything. I start hearing noise. They will stay <laughs> crazy at night. Very crazy stuff. And when I engage them in conversations, like, why are you doing this? They say, I mean, I just want to know how to have sex so that yes, when I get married, you I mean, to do or I'm just, I'm just enjoying myself. Like, it's fun. And I'm like, okay, you've had sex with this girl. What if she gets pregnant? Oh, she can't get pregnant. We are, we are using, using protection. Condom. That's fine. Use pro condom too. So there's no STD, no pregnancy. But don't you feel like you're emotionally attached to the person? Oh, no, I'm not emotionally attached. It's like food. So it looks natural, but the summary of everything is when they are doing it, they it's like they've said their conscience to say there's nothing wrong. But you that are not doing it, they now make you feel less than human. Yeah. So every time so you see how the world <laughs> has come to be. Like so the things that are wrong, the things that are wrong, the things that, that are clear cut wrong from scriptures, they begin to even deceive some believers. I hear, self I, hear, who, I hear people who are late teenagers like 19 18 20 that are feeling out of place they're feeling because their friends are having sex because they are virgins and they are looking down on them and yeah I'm like, like like i'm like 
how did the world it's, it's become so, like something this? to be celebrated? In fact, even if not celebrate, like is is but but I, I think it should be because that's that's God's expectation that you keep yourself pure. All right, so you keep yourself pure, and somebody is now making you feel less making than human. Making of you. Let me tell you what I to tell them then. So anytime they, they say such things like ah, OT, that's what they call people like that. OT, like ah, um, eh, kind of man, you don't do. You don't even know anything about sex. Stop talking here. And I tell them, I say, see, I'm gonna have the best of sex in this world when I get married, <laughs> because I know my Bible that I read tells me that God delights mm. in the prosperity of His servants. I am God's servant. Part of the pleasure, God takes pleasure in my prosperity. Part of the prosperity I'm going to have is I'm going to have prosperity in my marriage. I'm not going to have any trouble about sex in my marriage because it's going to be very awesome. God is going to give me a beautiful wife. Oh, beautiful wife. She'll be beautiful and she'll still be a virgin, Abby. I say, yes, she's going to be beautiful and <laughs> you, she's still going to I be a virgin. It, and I they'll say, la, la, it's I not possible. Talk, sorry, before you continue. Before you, don't forget your no, life. No, 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 no. I had a talk once. I can't remember where we were, but I was with some of my friends when we were in uni and I think maybe 400 or 500 level. I don't remember. And somebody said there's no unilag girl that is a virgin. And my friend was the one that like got the post to dream. And she said, no, like it's not true. Like she's a virgin. Like she she mentioned everybody she knows. Like it, it, you would only like, get it's not true. That's part of this cuteness that we're talking about. You're looking around. for, yeah. yeah. Like it's not true. Yeah. So 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 when they say that, I just love. I'm gonna have a wonderful wife. Yeah. So she's going to be wonderful, and she's going to be beautiful, and she's going to be a virgin. I think yes, she'll be beautiful, and she'll be a virgin. You mean like it's a lie? Like all the fine girls that I made, like all of them, they've been popoed. (laughs) And I'm saying it's a lie. That if it's going to remain only my wife, I will not be popoed. She will not be popoed. And the truth is, my wife finally came out from Medilag, that's University of Lagos College of Medicine, and she was not popoed. I met my wife at home, like they say in Yoruba land. Oh, you met me at home. I met her at home, 100%. And she's beautiful, man. What else do I want from God? In fact, every day till today, I still do this afternoon, like, God, as in, now, human being, you make with fine rich like this. Almost see something from beginning to the end. Like, Jesus is awesome. And I say it that God is the author of marriage. If you want to follow God all true in all that he has said concerning marriage, he will make it happen for you. True. There is Very no true. there is no kind of sex that they talk about except in now that we have not had. Huh. And it's wonderful. Huh. Except in now because we don't feel it's righteous. It's very unrighteous. Huh. Now, what I'm saying that is this. They were doing it then when they were when they were when they were not married yet, and they were thinking, oh, he's going to confer some kind of advantage it's on them. It's an art. It's an art. A R T. It's an art. Sex is an art. You can learn it. Can In fact, let it. me just you. The Holy Spirit is an energizer. <laughs> ha! Glory to God. Let's not talk about sex too much. Let's talk about some other things. Cohabiting. Yeah. Um, having multiple sexual partners. Um. Dating and just touching, touching people yes. on the area and there just to find out who the person is. They are all things that look wise. Oh, protect yourself. What don't if put all your eggs in one basket? Yes, they are all people. things that look wise, but they are foolish. Yep. Even the scriptures say that the wisdom of God, of God is even wiser than the foolishness. I mean, sorry, the, the, the wisdom of uh, the, the, the foolishness, foolishness of God, God is even wiser than the wisdom of men. All right. There are things that. That when when you think about it as a human being, they look logical. Oh, cohabit, lend the person. I but mean, I mean, pe- people who <laughs> like, get divorced, some of them have cohabited before. But I mean, what's the point? I think there's even a study. I'm not fully sure, but I think there's a study that talked about like, people that cohabit and divorce, like that, that like there's correlation. A, there's a correlation between cohabiting and divorce. So, so it doesn't even add up on the long run. It it's doesn't happen. Confusion everywhere. It's confusion <laughs> everywhere. It doesn't make sense. Sorry, one minute. I think I need to put this thing on. Yeah. So avoid troubles that touch the ass. Yeah, sorry. All right, sorry. I'm back. Sorry about that. Yeah, so he has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. If God allowed them to have a reprobate mind, it's because that's the way the world has been fashioned. God will not come down and tell men in Sodom, for instance, to stop having sex with men. All right, to the point that they even wanted to have with angels. That was how serious it was. So, and then another thing we need to understand like they that they virgin girls. They wanted angels. All, all the things that are happening in this generation, people say, ah, the world is coming to an end. The world has always been like that. Yep. 
and that's that's the um that's another thing that these people are, are using to um propagate their like they, they sound like oh nobody understands what they are going to like it's a yeah. new thing it's it's, it's, it's the world has, the world has like, always been like that people have had excuses exactly. for homosexuality in the past people it's have had excuses reasons. for cohabiting for fornication for adultery for whatever name it even sex outside marriage when you get married people have reasons for it and it's not the first and time another thing that should even make one wonder why or how homosexuality came to be is how come it's possible to be passed into someone like let me like how come it, it, it's like if you are abused like it's like a spirit has been in there's something not something not right you. about it there's something not right about then again it. apart from that look at it from the structural the transmission perspective let's even talk about the structural perspective like the way god made man and woman see eh, god the day i meet god i know it's, it's just that that day is going to be there'll like be there'll be bigger mind. things on my mind than just asking him some of those questions like how awesome are your thoughts and that's what david was trying to ask me because sounds like god is awesome the way god made everything is perfect it is the devil that brought imperfection into marital issues hmm. god has always wired a man to appreciate everything on a woman and not everything in a man god made things that are very obvious so that you will see that okay for instance a very good example a man will always have sex with his penis for instance and a woman will have sex with a vagina the structure already tells you that there is structure for function yep one thing has to enter the other round pegs round, round pegs round holes to fix everything but when you start having round pegs versus round <laughs> pegs then there's a problem it's not normal and where they put it in is where shit is supposed to come out from so how come god that created two different apertures in a woman knows that one is for like people, lock and key one is for um sexual pleasure for a man one is for we win and sexual pleasure and the other one is for poopoo but now you're putting what is supposed to be for sexual pleasure inside something that's to do with poopoo how do they correlate how and you know that scripture is correct it's saying that they are doing things that are that are not, not, even, not normal not that, even not convenient not, not convenient but the things that are not convenient are becoming normal now we didn't come here to talk about homosexuality yeah. and i'm trying to see how we can douse that and move to something else that's why i kept, I kept mentioning some other topics but the summary is this the reason why homosexuality seems to be coming to fall here is because it seems to be like the biggest attack actually in the body of Christ right now. Yep. Aside that is divorce, um, yeah. is um, cheating, cheating affairs, adultery, like... people having affairs, even in church, all sort of stuff. Now, the reason why is because the author, God the author, has been taken out of the equation and so marriages are failing. Now, when we said if marriage is a game, these are the rules. The number one rule to make sure that you don't fail in the game of marriage is that you must God acknowledge God as, as the author. And you are author. going to acknowledge him in every sense of it, whatever the word of God says. So I am not surprised when some people come out and say, oh, there is nothing wrong with homosexuality and they're going to church. They don't understand the word. They don't understand what the word of God says about it. Or they don't believe that the Bible is the word of God. They don't believe that the Bible is the written documentation of the word of God. So when you come out and say some things as a Christian, watch it very well. When you come out and you say, oh, you are homophobic. We are not homophobic. We are not, we don't hate those who are, who are homosexuals. We don't hate lesbians. In fact, we counsel, we, we sit, sit down with them, we counsel them, we speak with them, we show love to them. We have not in any way said they are less than human. But what we are trying to talk about here is how the world has now made what is supposed to be a pathology no, exactly. to be the anatomy. Like for us to what is now the anatomy is now a pathology. Like exactly. how it's supposed to be is now being reversed. Not medical, but yeah. anatomy is like sickness. Like it's sickness. Disease, like the yeah. issue. Yeah, normalcy is the anatomy. Like how it's supposed to be. You are not saying that those who are normal are the ones that are abnormal. So much that you are even making it very compulsory for those who are normal to uh, start having their mindset twisted towards that which is not normal that is why they are programming children right now in schools in the western world to say there is no sex like male and female there are know, over 100 that, genders but you know that how it doesn't even make sense kind of because if you can um term for instance pedophilia that is 
having sexual, having issues, sexual issues, issues with a child, issues like with, that, uh, with, with a minors. child. If you can term that as a disease or an illness or a mental issue or a crime, mm -hmm. then why can't that be normal? What if what is like? Yeah, so so that's the example I gave another time. That one, what if I wake up one day and say I feel like a twelve year old dude right now, yeah. and I have a twelve year old girl that I like and I want to go for her. What's, that what, that is what pedophilia, makes, Abby. What, what makes but but crime? that is the same thing that homosexuals if, come if, out with and say. Accepts, I mean, I if feel, I can talk to the girl and she accepts and it's not rape, even rape. What makes rape a crime? Like I see you, I like you. I feel like I must have you. exactly. Like I feel like there's nothing I wrong with like that now. That's, oh, that's so, my so, now, so now the world is actually not plain. It's, not. it's foolishness, <laughs> actually, because what you are we are punishing something no and you know the funniest thing. It's a matter of time. People will still come out and start saying things like that. Like 40 something year olds who start coming out and start saying things like, okay, see, I don't think I'm 40 something year old. I yeah. am a 10 year old I'm and I want to drink milo and milk like a 10 year old should drink. I want to, I want suck, my to suck my mommy's breast and I'm, I feel like 10 year old. Like a 10 year old. And the truth is, 14 then is unfair. Yeah, and then if you unfair. start, if you start, as I'm sure. I'm sure see, this is not the first time I've been shadow banned on Instagram. I've been shadow banned <laughs> severally. If you go and check my followership, the way I've been, my activity has been on Instagram. I should have more followers than, than I do now. No, but but there was a point in time. Thing. There was a point in time I I was shadow banned for like almost a year. I didn't like have I, one single I, extra I follower. Even had to, when I want to send him something, I had to type. She has to type my name for me to for, for her to see me on Instagram. I was shadow banned. Now it is because of things like this. Because when you come out to talk and. This is even like a defense. It's not like an attack. It's like a defense for what we believe the word of God is. Don't come and tell us what is not true about the world, about the world that God created. And you now make it look like, okay, we have to accept what you believe is the world or how the world should be. But you don't want to accept us. If we preach it to you, it's homophobia. But if you preach yours to us, it is normal. It is being woke. <laughs> then there's, there's, there's no equality. Something is not right there. And that is the foolishness that God was talking about in the scriptures. God is the author. God is the author. <laughs> don't, don't even don't God doubt it. God is the origin. God is the author of marriage. And it is Adam and Eve. God not has Adam and us Steve. instruction on every aspect. Exactly. Yeah. We've dealt a lot on, a lot on that. Homo, yeah, yeah. So let's move on. So, God, so, so what we're trying to pass across today is marriage is a game. And you can win in marriage. If you understand what the Bible says, what the word of God says about everything that's to do with marriage. Now, don't forget, I said it earlier on and I'm going to say it again. That if you want to understand uh, marriage, don't go and look for only scriptures that black and white talk about marriage. Look for scriptures that actually affect areas of marriage that, uh, that are not maybe commonly spoken when you hear marriage seminars or relationships. Yeah, because marriage isn't actually black or white. It's not actually. It's not actually. And, and everything that pertains to life and godliness has been given to you. Yes. Everything you need for All marriage, God has made it available yes. for you. There's a scripture I love so much. And I think, I, I, let, me, let me try and search for that scripture. That scripture, I think is um, First Corinthians two twelve. I'll confirm now. What Let me confirm that talks about um, the fact that everything you need, the Holy Spirit has been given to you as a seal for it. I mean, it's the seal of God's promise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, First uh, Corinthians two twelve it says, "Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God." That we might understand the things freely given us by God. Everything has been freely given to you. But you are not actually, you've not received the spirit of the world. The spirit of the world is always warring against the Holy Spirit. It's always wanting to come and thwart what God has defined and designed the way it's supposed to be from the foundations of the world. And the spirit of the world wants to come and kill those thoughts in your heart and take you away from the knowledge of God concerning those things and now wants to establish what the world thinks is right. But what the Spirit of God does is that it comes to you and whispers to you every moment all the things that have been freely given to you. See, marriage is one of the blessings God has given to humanity. Through marriage was God's plan for humanity to actually have dominion and and enjoy everything that god has created we talked about sex the other time aside sex as per pleasure also the purpose why marriage was created is even primarily about the kingdom 
you bring forth seeds that you would actually replenish the earth and you will teach you righteousness. There was one reason only that God said to uh, to Abraham that he's his friend. Yes. I think it's Genesis 18, 19. Like you're, you're he said to teach that he's going to teach his children you righteousness, were. justice, and, and equity. equity. Righteousness, justice, and equity. And that's why God called Abraham his friend. Simple. Simple. So Just you because know how are, big God is yeah, your family and, oh, family transferring, and, and transferring of gene of Transferring God's righteousness, wisdom, transferring Teach, teachings of God, transferring the kingdom, the of mind God, of God, the, mind the will of God, God to your children. To your children. I mean, Every other thing, God, God might not really care. But when God sees that there is a family that is interested in making sure that their children are taught in the will of the Lord, God takes special interest in them. And if you are truly, genuinely interested in passing that thing across to your children, God will make everything you need to make it happen available for you. Everything by the spirit of God, not the spirit of this world, by the spirit of God. So in marriage, you can win big. If it's a game, you can win big. You can gel all like they will say in Yoruba. Like I am a living proof of the fact and that we have many people who and, are and, and I can tell you there are marriages. many people we know that are <laughs> friends who are having awesome marriage. In fact, I look at my close circle recently. <laughs> not circle, sorry, before you start abusing me now. I look at my close circle recently and even today I had to drop it on the WhatsApp group that I belong to one of my very close friends and I said see I'm happy I'm happy I have you guys as my friends because because I looked at it and I said and I and I looked at their marriages I looked at their relationship with their wives and the husbands and everything and everything is so sweet it's like as ordained by God it doesn't mean there are no challenges in every marriage but I mean, you 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 have you, you have to. Another thing I would like to say is this: before we round off, you have to surround yourself with yes. people that actually yes. believe in this yes. nonsense in quotes yes. that we have preached today. Because yes. now the Bible says it is foolishness. What we have preached today is foolishness to the world. To the world. Yes. But to you, it is the power of God. All right, you have to surround yourself with people that believe it. There is none of my friends that Absolutely. cannot watch for their wives. What is that? That's, that's, that's even basic. That was... There's none of my friends that don't that don't support their wives in whatever way possible. Support the family. Support, support the family. Support. support. I mean, no, I'm even talking about. But it's not it's common. True. It's, it's true. not common. It's true. These things that look common, they are not common. Yeah, right. I mean, enough. we when, when we counsel, you hear these things yourself. Like there are Fair things enough. that when you hear people say about their marriage, you just like, God. But every time I look at my friends, I surround myself myself with. I find men who are doing marriage God's way. <laughs> and that is what I want you to take out of this message today as well. <laughs> that God is the author of marriage and you need to surround yourself with men who have God or... <laughs> I cite you, bro. <laughs> you have to surround yourself with men who have God as... Uh, someone they believe is the author of marriage and anything he says marriages is what it is not what tradition says not what culture says not what social media says not what family says not what your parents have defined marriage to be mm. not what your friends society, or people around you or the, the society world. or the world has defined marriage to be but what God said and God is looking for you know that scripture that, that, that scripture that talks about who is it who is going to yes. ascend to the heel of the Lord yes. who has God a clean is heart and for you. He gets, a clean hands and broken spirit who will not who will not call iniquity righteousness hmm. who will not call righteousness iniquity hmm. those are the people that god is looking for who not you, moved who by not be, the wave of of anything going on in yeah, that generation yeah those are the people that god is looking for and god is one god is desiring that you surround yourself with such people today that's All right. something that would help you. And it will help you to actually stand firm. Yes. Because if you stand alone and everybody around everybody you is around just doing, you is doing the opposite. Or doing yeah. the wrong thing, you might even begin to question your sanity. Yeah, exactly. And that doesn't help for your faith. Exactly. You know, surround yourself with people that are doing things God's way. Exactly. Like I, I always say, when people say, oh, bad marriages, bad marriages. Yes, they are bad marriages, but they are good marriages. Like there are people that are genuinely enjoying themselves. As in 100%. Like, like they wish they got married earlier than when they did. 100%. Say. So 100%. what you choose to believe is what, what will happen to you. Exactly. What you surround yourself with. Exactly. So I think we have done justice to this today. Um, summarily, God is the author of marriage. <laughs> 
find people around you who believe these things and find God for yourself. Yeah, believe that God believe is the originator God is the origin, of marriage. And, and He will teach you what marriage is all about. He can give you all you need. Everything you need. To do marriage His way. Yeah. If you don't believe it, then that's the first problem. Because you, if you don't believe that something exactly, that something, exactly, that can actually make that it something can, for you. or somebody has given, not someone can give you, that someone has given you all these things, then you cannot be patient to receive it or even ask for it. Yeah. So you have to believe first of all that God is truly the originator of marriage, and that all that you need to make your marriage work, to make your marriage the way He intended it to be, has actually been given to yeah. you. You just need to receive it. Yeah, exactly. All right, so that ends today for us. Thank you very much for tuning in, everyone that tuned in. I think we should actually check. We always get to miss this part of the audio, so we need to check. Um, okay, let's do this way. Ah, okay, don't right. worry, don't worry. Forgive us. So let's just scroll through and see who actually. All right. Um, okay. Yeah, Comrade MacDuff. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Mrs. Ario, thank you for joining. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Life on Flick, Makonjola, Biodun, Chidima. Thank you very much. Aaron West, Prophet Mary Joby, Ogo Ogo, WP, <laughs> Godwin. Thank you, everyone that joined. God bless you so much. And um, we really appreciate this. God bless you. All right. So let's have a wonderful weekend. We pray that your homes are blessed Amen. and graced. And that God, who is the author of marriage, will visit your marriage. If you're not married, he will give Amen. you the bone of your bone and the flesh of your flesh. You will not fail in marriage. Amen. God will elevate you to the position Amen. where you see marriage from his perspective. Amen. And it makes life easier and sweet for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for answer prayers. You, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Say bye-bye, baby. <laughs> bye bye baby. Say bye bye now. Are you bye bye baby. baby.